Hey, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to say call hello, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bashem, Rakaha Kudash. I want to send double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. I want to send much peace, love, and salutations to you, Akim, out there pushing the word of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, in sincerity and truth. This is the brother Ariala. And on this lesson, this is just going to be a quick World War III uh, update. And uh, we're going to do an update on the MOTB, some of the news that's been going on out there. And just kind of touch on a few articles, a couple of uh, videos, a lot of that stuff you brothers may know. But I wanted to consolidate this down into a, a single video. And so we can be able to reference on down the line when things uh, start to move forward a little bit more. Okay. Baba Kusha, if you brothers can put scriptures into the comment boards, we're going to move this information, bring out a couple of scriptures, but uh, try to get straight to the point. With no further ado, we're going to get started with Amos chapter 3. Verse 6, and it says, Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city, and the Lord hath not done it? Surely the Lord power will do nothing, but he reserveth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. And, you know, the scripture, um, I'm, I want to highlight his secrets being given to his prophets, because this is something that we've been continuously going in on for the past you know years that we've been here and our apostles even before that you know for decades have been talking about how they are going to you know shift into a more uh, a devilish uh, control grid system where everybody is completely integrated into their financial system and you cannot move or operate unless you bow to the image of the beast and you take his mark and um, now we're starting to see legislative wise and technologically them starting to bring everything together to complete this uh, digital godhead that they want. You know, they're moving forward with uh, moving out of what we understand as the petrodollar system and moving in into a, a di digital conglomerate con currency system. You know, there's a lot of uh, FUD, you know, fear, uncertainty, and doubt about a dollar crash and necessarily how they're going to do it. We just know that there's going to be major turmoil in the world. And, um, and basically, during that time of tribulation, they're going to be trying to push all of this, um, you know, basically wickedness, this MOTB on, on the people. And we're seeing it come together. But the only people that's really putting all the things together with the scriptures and, and giving the fullness of the understanding is the servants, the prophets, man. Those who were given the spirit by Yahweh Shem Yahweh to come in and, and break these things down. So I want to open up with this one video uh, that the brothers have been circulating touch on a few things but i want to um maybe come from a different angle on certain mindsets and, and stuff like that lord willing this is edifying okay put a law in place back in 2008 they snuck it in a big you know 10,000 page bill where the banks could seize the depositors and creditors uh deposits so people are asking me what's going on with the u.s dollar i'm sure most most of you are aware by now. If you're not, I'll go ahead and let you in on it. The dollar's going away. The U.S. currency will no longer be the reserve currency of the world. We will put in what's called a CBDC, which is a programmable digital currency. They've been working on that for several years. Another name for it is Biden bucks. Some people are calling it. So now he's dumbing it down when he's saying the dollar will go away. How how they will be able to do that is is a very intricate process. Just because the dollar is entrenched pretty much in every economy around the world. So you can the dollar can't just go away. All right, now, uh, you, you know, he's going to mention some things that are very true. Them removing dollars out of circulation in the market will cause ripple effects across all markets. It will cause riots. It will cause turmoil. It will cause generalized economic upheaval, which is what they want. You know, being prepared, them being prepared to do that is something that, we, hey, we just got to see how reckless they're going to get with it and how they're going to go with it. From what we read in the scriptures, you know, when we go into 2nd Ezra, the 15th chapter is going to get crazy out here. So, you know, we'll read that in, the, in, in a minute. But, um, yeah, what the, what the way he's saying it is uh, it's, it's, it's very much more of a gradualistic, intricate process than to just say, oh, the dollar's going away, you know. Cash is going away. And if you're if you've not been made aware up till now, if you've not seen any news reports, because the media is mainly blacking this out, so you don't really know what's going on. But all the leaders around the world are telling everyone to dump the dollar. 
and their citizens are following suit. So what that's going to do is just destroy the value of our currency. It will go to basically zero, just like Venezuela. If you want to see what's going to happen here, look at what happened to Venezuela when its dollar collapsed or its currency collapsed. Uh, that's exactly what's coming here. So everyone needs to be aware of this. They also, in another component, put a law in place back in 2008. And, and, and again, that's a very major oversimplification. Okay. For, before, people have to realize how ridiculously rich America is. Stupid. It's retarded. All these other uh, nations that are linked to America will go into absolute turmoil then it will lead to America so you'll see basically the world ablaze and then uh, and then uh, America will will go up to even China will go into a, a, a frenzy they snuck it in a big you know 10,000 page bill where the banks could seize the depositors and creditors' uh, deposits, and there's no guarantee or even law that says they have to give it back. So this is already happening in other countries around the world. Banks are being burnt to the ground, and the media has a complete blackout on it. So that's how you know it's something they don't want you knowing about. They want you to be unaware of what's coming. So here's what I'll give you a timeline, okay? Real quick, the banks are going, uh, when he's saying the banks, um, you have these mid-tier and smaller level banks that uh, have s cash reserves, but a lot of these cash reserves, when you look in the bond market, is really is their their liquidity or their ability to get cash is is linked to the bond market because of the rise in interest rates. It's basically jacked up the bond market, and so these banks that are over leveraged like that, and and when people come and ask for hundreds of millions of dollars. At once, because they want to transfer out or do this or do that, and they want to, you know, basically it makes these uh, banks default. And so then you have a larger bank come and basically say, "We see that you can't close out a lot of these payments. Uh, we will take over that and refinance your bank, but you're gonna come underneath our wing." And so you have these bigger banks will that will are rapidly buying up the smaller and mid tier banks. <clears throat> In July, they will roll out what's called the FedNow system. Now, that is a basically a payment processing system, similar to PayPal or something like that. So from now on, right after that, they'll implement the digital currency. They'll crash the dollar, and then they'll force you. They'll let chaos reign for a few months. I don't know, a few weeks, few months, who knows? I can't tell you exactly how long it'll take, but they need rioting to go on. They need stores to be empty, which that'll only take three days after the dollar collapses. You're going to need to have three months of food, you know, wa water, uh, just uh, necessary supplies because stores will empty out very quickly. Think back. Yeah, and this is how unrealistic Edomites are. If you really think that your three months of food is going to save you, you're just an idiot. I mean, in a time like that, the chaos is going to be so crazy. It doesn't matter if you have if somebody's going to try to come get it. You're going to have to defend it. Be, that, that it's that will be extremely difficult. Okay, extremely difficult. Now, real quick with this whole Fed Now thing, one of the things I want to clear up with the Akiyam is that Fed Now is not blockchain. Okay, it is not CBDCs. It is a a way of closing out payments instantaneously. Okay, it's a way of closing out payments instantaneously. Uh, kind of like how you send money from uh, your cash app to another person. Now big businesses, banks will be able to do that and be able to move funds rapidly. And they're even going to probably have it from banks to corporations as well. And uh, <clears throat> they'll use this system to get people or get ba banks um, accustomed to these type of transactions. And w this is just me guessing. Um, underneath this system, you'll be able to move money out of a bank so fast and so quickly that you'll be able to uh, destroy banks faster. So I anticipate uh, the Fed now system getting rid of a lot of these banks even quicker because it's going to make y your need to be very liquid is going to be very important. Because people are going to be able to re request payment 
and get payments from here uh, there to here fast quick easy you know and uh, if your money ain't right you're gonna get you're gonna be through I'm gonna play this clip about three minutes of it and then we'll go back to uh, the clip that was with the uh, the brother sent brother posted in place and really what do you think uh, we might see as the most readily uh, embraced low-hanging fruit when Fed now is a reality in let's call it uh, just about four weeks yeah yeah we're on Fed now Eve almost the month before so with with the adoption of Fed now initially and we're going to see the initial uptake if you're looking at it from the financial institutions um, it's going to be a, a large concentration of smaller regional banks community banks and credit unions and what's happened is Back when RTP launched back in 2016, they RTP it means real time payments, it's like a faster way of processing payments. Fed now is supposed to be even more efficient, 24 seven. No holdups, no 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 stoppages. Go. Had the largest financial institutions in the nation help support that, and they really went through the learning lessons to identify what does it really take to launch a new payment rail, and what's happened is. Um, the learnings have been massive, right? And they under, there's a there's a much clearer understanding of all the different platforms that need to be addressed in order to launch a real time payment network. So a lot of these smaller financial institutions have taken the last five, six, seven years to really metabolize uh, what's been done in the market with those RTP banks, and they're getting ready to launch with Fed now. So we're going to see, as far as number of banks are concerned with with Fed now. Uh, if I'm you know, being a fortune teller within the first 12 months of launch, there's maybe a couple hundred FIs on Fed now. And when we compare that to the number of FIs that are sitting on the RTP network, last I checked, it was about two months ago, there's about 280-ish financial institutions. So there's been um, there's going to be this this larger number of FIs that I think adopt Fed now initially um, compared to RTP. And then when you look at the use cases within Fed now um, were well, you best to believe that already because of the strains on the economy, them adopting Fed now was in the paperwork. In order for you to receive this loan, in order for us to, for you to take this bail out or for us to keep you afloat, you're going to have to take this Fed now system that's going to be rolled out. It's already in the documentation. Where do we think that the, the, the uptick is going to take on, on um, the payment transaction types? There's two types of payment transactions in Fed now, right? There's credit transfers and there's RFPs. And I'm willing to bet the farm that's uh, within the first 12 months of Fed now being live, we're going to see the mass majority of transaction volume occurring uh, through the credit transfer solution. Um, and specifically within that credit transfer, uh, you're going to see business to business as a, as a use case that gets initial uptake uh, and then account to account transfers. And that's something that we hear. Now, when you hear account to account transfers, it's not you sending $2,500 to somebody. You're talking about millions and millions and hundreds of millions of dollars being transferred from this place to another. Okay. Maybe, you know. At Trustly, uh, we've experienced exceptional traction um so if you have a business that owns that that supply that uh, that supplies wood and in another business that buys wood and, and a person needs you know 3.5 their bank they'll be able to send from their bank to your bank 3.5 million dollars cheaper quicker faster better according to their rules account to account account to account transfers using a real-time payment network. Uh, so we fully expect that um, within the first 12 months, we're gonna see a, a very large uh, uptick um, or traction with the account-to-account -account transfer uh, for FedNow. With those initial... Okay, and so that's what FedNow is. And so it's getting these larger institutional banks and corporations used to sending money in this fashion. It's priming things for uh, CBDCs, which that, that'll come along with the uh, central banks and, and their, uh, ba basically how they deal with uh, regular banks and, and businesses, okay? That's just priming. All of this is gradualism, but what, we're, what we've noticed within the last, I would say, three, 
to five years is they're moving much more quickly than the 10 years prior to that. So they're moving fast, very, very quickly. This is how we know the MOTV is coming. And it's not going to... It's not going to take as long as people think. There's still some things they can need to do, but we're we're very close. We're very close from them able to execute Revelation the thirteenth chapter in the way that it's said. In the, in in for those that are spiritual, when you read it, and he calls us all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark. The right hand or the forehead, that no man may not be, that no man be able to buy or sell, save he have the mark or the number of his name. We're getting close for the, the when you read the scripture and understand it and break it down in the spirit, for them to actually be able to execute that in the earth. We're very close to it. Okay, we're very close to it. And he's u- he's using business and his tr- and, and traffic and and basically how the world is integrated in this inter international monetary you know economic system to execute this because it starts off with those groups it starts off with the big banks and then the corporations linking then that'll transition down into the retail buyers and us on on, on Main Street. But in the background, these are the things that are getting that are happening, right? So when you read Ezekiel 28, 5, by thy great wisdom and by thy traffic, meaning merchandise, moving stuff across the world, has thou increased thy riches and thy heart is lifted up because of thy riches, all right? And, and with his heart being lifted up, he's been able to establish what? Laws, regulation, control mechanisms, all right? Now... When we look out, we still see other nations bucking up to these control mechanisms. So Esau is going to want to clamp it down even more in this digitized world. In the digitized world, he's going to he's going to want to clamp down even more. All right, he's got the clamp, so to speak. Well, he can utilize sanctions and lie and use propaganda, but he don't even have to do all that. You know, this is where we read in Revelation the thirteenth chapter. All right, but like we said, order out of chaos, and that's what this guy's talking about. He's talking about order out of chaos. He, he's saying that Esau, the world bankers and the elite that really kind of control everything, are going to bring about mass global chaos. When you want to talk about the U.S. dollar, the U.S. dollar collapsing is not going to create American chaos. The U.S. dollar collapsing will produce worldwide absolute economic destruction. This is how integrated the U.S. dollar is with everything. I'm going to go over a couple of concepts here in a minute to show you how powerful the U.S. dollar is. Now, when you read in Habakkuk, the second chapter, and brother can put it into the comment boards, but when it talks about he have laden himself with thick clay, when we read that in Habakkuk, the second chapter, that abat yat, when you look that word up in Hebrew for thick clay, meaning debt, the treasury bond buying up of fiat dollars, securing the U.S. dollar debt to strengthen the dollar, all these nations have been have taken that on to secure the dollar. Because they have pegged their money to the dollar or they have pegged the, their trade ratios and how they want to trade in the market to the dollar. And when you fuck that up, you will destroy how you get bread. You will destroy how you get drink. You will destroy the basic mechanisms of how people eat and live. And that will cause global chaos absolute mayhem out in the market okay back to when the covid scam was going on and how fast people rushed and emptied out stores okay well now just imagine money getting cut off you have no access the banks are closed they will not reopen during this 
There's no ATMs that will work. You're just out of cash. They'll be looting. They'll be rioting. It's going to be crazy for a little bit, and they need that. They need that chaos going on so they can force you into the digital dollar system, okay, the, the programmable digital currency. Now, that's horrible for all. Boom. So, so he's, he's, he's mentioning something that is true. When these, all of these things are, are coming, all these things are being manifested. All these things are happening. Second Ezra 9. Um, yeah, sorry. I said Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 2. Then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, and that's what he's talking about, uproars of the people. Then shall thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. The word manifest means it's being revealed. Okay, it's being revealed. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings in wonder and powerful works, the endings and endings and effects and signs. All right, so we're seeing all of these things culminate and begin to happen. All right, and so they're getting ready to, to produce this digital system that everybody is going to be so fearful and scared they're going to run into it. They're going to run into this inevitability that the elite believe that they're going to be able to control. But we're here to tell you, we're here to tell you, man, that they thinking that they're going to be able to control it they're setting themselves up in a snare because they're thinking they're going to wrangle everybody up and kill off any di dissidents. But it's going to lead into World War III, Armageddon. It's not going to be just the U.S. going through a banking crisis. It's going to be the whole world burning. And it's going to lead to fighting and destruction. And they're going to try to bring it together with this MOTB. And it's going to be a complete failure, as the scripture said. They're gonna, the world is going to burn, right? This is from Reuters, uh, uh, written on June 19th, a couple days ago. It says, the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, working on global central bank digital currency platform. Now, they've been working on this for years. And we've been reporting on this, bringing it out through the scriptures, reading the articles, going in on it, okay? The uh, IMF is working on a platform for central bank digital currencies to enable transactions between countries, All right? This the IMF managing director said, CBDC sh should not be fragmented national, national uh, pro uh, propositions. To have more efficient and fairer transactions, we need systems that connect countries. We need interoperability. See that? This is the mindset. All right, so, 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 the uh, uh, the managing director told a conference attended by African Central Banks in Rabat, Morocco. So it was in Morocco. For this reason, IMF are working on the concept of a global CBDC platform. The IMF wants central banks to agree on a common regulatory framework for digital currencies that would allow global interoperability. Failure to agree on a common platform uh, would create a vacuum that will likely be filled by cryptocurrencies. See that? So they don't want decentralized. They want to have a centralized network that's regulated, meaning the, uh, uh, something that we all agree on is safe, right? It says that's why you've been seeing the 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 psyop of central centralized exchange uh, cryptocurrency founders. That's why you see them attacking Binance. You had the whole FTX fiasco. You had these banks that were associated with cryptocurrencies. And you you you, you have all this stuff in uh, the cryptocurrency world because they're trying to push it in your mind that, hey, this stuff don't work. It's, it's a scam. What we're going to bring is actually what has value. We tell you what value is. Meanwhile, they're buying up all that stuff anyway because they want that money too. All right. And as we've seen, BlackRock just has a deal with Coinbase and now they're going to have a Bitcoin ETF. BlackRock being a nine trillion dollar, you know, multinational business that pretty much has their hands in every major business all across the world. 
why would they be having a Bitcoin ETF if it was such a scam? If it was bull coin? It, it's just, they, they, they push out news to get you out of it, and then they buy it cheap, and then they sell it to you. You know? And so they're, they're doing all of these things, okay? It says, uh, the CB, a CBDC... A CBDC is a digital currency controlled by the central bank, while cryptocurrencies are nearly always decentralized. That's not true, but yeah. Basically, the people control it instead of a central uh, organization, all right? Um, not the people control it. Really, it's just code that you interact with, and you can interact with other people through it without having an a agency tell you what to do, how to do, when, or take a picture, what's your name, you know, give me your social security number. Decentralized basically is you can operate anom anonymously without anybody controlling or having rules on you. All right. And so basically it's created this digital wild, wild west monetarily and they want everybody to be afraid of it. Meanwhile, they're scooping it all up. OK, already 114 central banks are at some stage of CBDC exploration. With about 10 already crossing the finish line, she said. If countries develop CBDCs only for domestic development, we are underutilizing their capacity, she added. You see this? And so they're already, basically she's telling, we already have the legislation, we already have the rules, we already have what's needed, but they're telling you right now in the news here on June 19, 2023, everything that she's talking about, that, International Monetary Fund has already been watching everything, studying it. They got brainiacs all the way ahead of it. They got smart kids in universities, economics programs, you know, master's doctorate programs, economics, doing all types of studies on it, and they're just gathering data. They already have it all figured out, okay? They're moving you towards this piece by piece by piece is being gradually pushed into the market, okay? They just need the mayhem. They just need the fear. They just need you, the everyday layman, to think that, hey, it's not that bad. Hey, we should just go ahead and do this, okay? They're already, they're already on it. They've been on it. Beware. The United Nations is spearheading a potentially alarming initiative, a global digital ID system tied to individual bank accounts. This scheme echoes a system developed by the World Economic Forum. These digital IDs integrated with bank or mobile money accounts are touted as being beneficial, but at what cost to our freedom and privacy? The United Nations, an unelected body, seeks to regulate our digital future. They use buzzwords like international cooperation and stakeholders to advance their globalist agenda. But don't be fooled. Their vision of a digital future could be far from open, free, or human-centric. Their so-called vision for a future global financial system is supposed to be harmonized with the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And the way that they're moving, they're going to do this before 2030. I mean, they're on the trajectory to get this done before 2030. You know, they're trying to get this shit done. They're not playing. And that's why we shouldn't be playing. Do we spend probably y'all about your man shots? It's important <clears throat> to get into the spirit and understand. The scriptures talk about how the name of the Heavenly Father is a strong tower in the book of Proverbs. You ought to be running into that name as a defense and as a covering for what the the, the, the violent man, the wicked, are getting ready to do. And they're moving quick. You know, like it says in the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter, because he knoweth he hath but a short time. He's moving. They say a 2030 plan, but the scripture says that they, this thing is a thief in the night, man. He's the most high, you know. He'll put the spirit on this man to get this thing done quickly, okay? Covered by an obscure apex body yet to be established. The key players, the UN chief, the group of 20, the Economic and Social Council, the heads of international financial institutions, unsurprisingly, they're all working toward a global digital compact. The objective to weave a web that connects people, devices, and entities, all controlled centrally by unelected bureaucrats. The potential negative impact is brushed off with concerns limited to just civil society or select groups excluded from social benefits. But could we all be in the crosshairs of this dystopian future? Meanwhile, Yeah, so they're going to do it on the back end first. You'll see uh, big business and banks, they, they create all of these veins and waves of moving money like Fed now. 
and then they'll slowly incorporate it to where okay now that you work if you're gonna use a uh, mm, Starbucks app well now you're gonna have a Starbucks wallet that's gonna have your credits or the, your money that's going to be in that wallet, and that's where you'll spend your money out of that. You know what I mean? Or, you know, even with the bank, they'll start to utilize these different type of digital things to uh, get you used to it, you know? And it's just like we said, they'll even have it to where now you have to download this app for your income tax or for your uh, Social Security payments or for your, um, what's it called, welfare payments, where you have to download this on your phone and your payments will come directly here. Boom, boom, boom. You ain't got to have it, you know. That's how it's going to be. Just how, like, Cash App works. And then you connect the Cash App to your bank or whatever. And so, yeah, it, you know, it's very, it's like, oh, this is going to be better so we can execute the payments faster to you and everything like that. So, you know, how are they going to do it? We're going to have to, we're going to see, but it'll be a gradualistic type of thing, how they bring it to the people but on the back end right now you know the big dogs the big you know international corporations go uh, 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 bodies like you said non-elected official bodies they already got this stuff going all right while the world economic forum far from being a passive observer has allied with a leading swedish biometric company called the fingerprints card to further their own agenda to digitize humanity they claim biometric forms of digital id all right, means of social inclusion. But it is this boom. And so we already see Obama started to mention that. And so these are all things are going to come together. You know, don't listen to Nathaniel Seven from IUIC. You know, he has a different type of agenda. This is what they're getting ready to do. Okay. Play a lot of reasons. One, they can tell you where you can spend your money, when you can spend it how much you can spend. They can penalize and take money straight out of your bank account if they don't like what you're saying or doing on social media, or if they tell you to do something like take more shots and you refuse. So if they want to give you more shots and you refuse, they can just shut off your money. Just turn it off like a light switch. There's nothing you can do about it. I mean, they, you guys have no clue. Well, a lot of people, let me say that. A lot of people have no clue what this means and how much control they're going to have. Everybody's going to have to come under this underneath them. What you sin, what you don't sin. Listen, you ain't down with it, you'll be a terrorist or whatever. Everybody's going to have to uh, receive. Uh, when they want to individualize it and put into everybody particularly to connect them into a, a global grid, you're going to have to receive it at Mark. And that Mark is going to have everything. Your passport, your driver's ID, all right, your, your so-called bank account or access to payments, okay? It's going to have your immunizations. It's going to have your Social Security. It's going to be all located in one so-called convenient place on your body, okay? If you chop your hand off, they'll put it somewhere else. <laughs> That's how they'll do it, okay? Have over everything you do or say it's going to be bad however it's probably gone too far to stop at this point i've been telling people this for a couple of years now other people have been trying to tell people and wake people up it's just not it's not worked everybody's asleep everybody's focused on you know what the mainstream media is, is talking about on any given day all these crises they keep creating to distract your attention on what's going on here so it is what it is at this point once the FedNow system goes in place in July, it's going to go full online in July, okay? Once that happens, at some point between now and the end of the year, they are going to crash everything. It'll be the worst crash in human history. However, it's going to take phases for them to completely crash it, okay? So the first thing they... Now, we don't know if they're going to do that. We know that if they continue to cre increase rates, how, the, how they're going to do it. The, look, see... America's so rich, things can crash, and, and you on Main Street, you won't feel it. Things might be a little bit more expensive, but meh. But, but in the background, you could have financial institutions completely failing and being bought out. But you never really feel it because they simply just transitioned. You know, I remember when Wachovia got bought out by Wells Fargo. And they just be like, oh, you you Wells Fargo now. I'm like, wait a minute, I don't, what, what? So you can be just transitioned to something, but you don't really feel it like that. But really things are crashing and burning. 
think people are going bankrupt. This is happening. That's had. That's happening. You know. But meanwhile, out in the rest of the world, all hell is breaking loose because they don't have that type of bread capability and everything like that. Because America or Babylon the Great is ridiculously rich, so it's going it's going to take time to get to these levels. When you read here in, in uh, Second Ezra, fifteenth chapter, all right, and the fifth verse says, "Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon that world." Uh, the sword, famine, death, and destruction upon the world. When the U.S. dollar, if the U.S. dollar collapses or switches from one thing to another, it's going to cause worldwide absolute turmoil. Okay, worldwide absolute turmoil. It's going to be crazy. All right. Uh, skipping down to verse fourteen, it says, "Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draw nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another." And swords in their hands, for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their king nor princes, and their in the course of their actions shall be in, uh, in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city, and shall not be able. Close borders, maybe even states, maybe even cities. All right. For it says for because of their pride, the cities. The cities, there you go, shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Meaning, men are going to be worried, watching. You're going to have your pistol on you in that day. All right? You know, I, mean, I talk to a lot of people here in Dallas, man. A lot of people in Dallas now, they're just like, look, man, I don't go nowhere without my pistol in my car. All right? Now, especially you drive around out there in the, uh, other major cities. All right? L.A., Stuff like that, man. Look, people have they people gonna have a sword on them, a pistol, and men shall be afraid. So, how much more when this when this dollar begins to slow down and the circulation of it gets jacked up, and and it's gonna throw everything off. Everything will be thrown off when the dollar is thrown off. And you're gonna, and the rest of the world is gonna feel it before even here in uh, America. Okay, the dollar could be thrown off just a little bit, and it will completely jack up these Arab African nations, some of these Asian nations. All right, and it'll make things stupid expensive in the European nations, China, everything like that. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'm gonna talk about it a little bit here in a second, just a little bit. All right, just a different, a little bit of a different perspective, more of a technical perspective. For those that's watching, okay? This is back in 2nd Ezra chapter uh, 15, verse 19. It says, A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. That's why you, know, you need to have, make sure you have three to six months of, of, of food reserves. You need to make sure to stock and get your... Look, bro, if you live in one of these basic cities, towns... You gonna let all, let, let, let all the food be shut down in the grocery store for three months. What do you think gonna be happening in the streets? What do you think gonna be happening if it's just you and your family? You never build a relationship with anyone around you. You know your neighbor Tom, but not really. But this dude over here got a good group of 25 grown-ass men. What do you think those 25 grown-ass men gonna be doing? They're gonna be going to house to house taking what they want and you're going to be there trying to defend Susie Q on your own with your three months of food they're going to be going they're going to spoil their goods like it says because of lack of bread and for great tribulation that's what you're going to see when this dollar gets thrown off when this dollar gets put into a crazy place just one second now when we understand this So when we look at this right here, it says Saudi Arabia. This is on money wise, okay? It says Saudi Arabia just said they are now open to the idea of trading in currencies beside the US dollar. Does this spell doom for the greenback? Three reasons not to worry. Alright. Can't get rid of the US of the US that easily. Now, 
this article goes and, and, and makes some different points. But the point that I want you uh, brothers to understand is when we look and understand how money is pegged together, how money is tied together, and how that basically works in traffic around the world. Saudi Arabia does not have the financial capability to get outside the dollar without destroying their own economy. Okay? They 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 they've laid down with the beast. And so they caught that they bought they caught that clap. They messed up. This is says why uh currencies pegged to the US dollar right here, okay? Currency why currencies pegged to the US as countries have different reasons for pegging to the dollar. Most of the Caribbean islands, Aruba, Bahamas, Barbados, and Bermuda, to name a few, peg their currencies to the U.S. dollar because their main source of income is derived from tourism paid in dollars. Fixing to the U.S. dollar stabilizes their economies and make, makes them less volatile. Okay? In Africa, many countries peg to the euro. The exceptions being Djibouti and Tritia which pegged their own currencies to the U.S. dollar. In the Middle East, many countries, including Jordan, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates, pegged to the U.S. dollar for stability. The oil-rich nations need the US, United States as a major trading partner for oil. All right? And so it says in Asia, Macau and Hong Kong fixed the U.S. dollar. China, on the other hand, has been in broad controversy about its currency policy. While China does not officially peg the Chinese yuan to a basket of currencies that includes the U.S. dollar, China does manage the exchange rate of the yuan to dollars so as to benefit its uh, export-driven economy. All right. So when you look at these different nations here, they're all pegged to the U. They're all pegged to the U.S. dollar. Okay. And what that does is it gives them the ability to continue to trade down in the market and not have their personal currencies be ridiculously volatile against economic fluctuations, all right? Because the dollar is very, very strong. Everybody's holding dollars. When these nations make a decision to say, hey, I'm going to trade in other currencies outside of the dollars for my goods, what people don't understand is that the U.S. dollar is so ridiculously entrenched into all the global markets that China, let's put it like this. The United States dollar is in like 55% holdings for everybody. China is like 2.2%. In order for you to say, oh, I'm going to trade in the Chinese yuan, bro. You you wouldn't you would need the Chinese yuan to more than go up by like twenty x. It's just extremely unlikely to happen in a short period of time. So a major shift in dealing with the United States dollar and dealing with other so called currencies would create such an economic turmoil. We know for a fact that it's on purpose. That actually these nations are working together to cause a chaos, including China. It's so uh, stupid and asinine for these other nations to even think that they can trade outside of the dollar. That we know that they're intentionally wanting a collapse. Okay. You have to understand this. All right. So these are nations that are fixed. Or, or I'm sorry, that are fixed to the United States dollar. They can't get out, or their whole economy will be destroyed overnight. Point blank, period. All right, you can't just switch to the Chinese yuan. It's not strong enough to support what you want as far as stability in your oil. Your your oil will go will be ridiculously cheap, and you can't make no money, or it'll be ridiculously expensive, and nobody will buy it. They will just go somewhere else. That's what will happen to Saudi Arabia. If they tried to get out of the dollar, their their oil prices will be so volatile in the market, no one would trust the prices and no one would fuck with them. Okay? That's what will happen. It's just math. It's basic math. All right? Now, when you want to talk about a floating currency, 
This is something I want to explain to you. When we were looking, when we were looking at it, we have to understand the world is driven by trade and the movement of goods and services. And this is how you rule the world. And this is what the Israelites are going to get back in control of is the creation of the earth and how it's moved. How it's moved across the earth. Dominion over the Lord's creation. That's what uh, the these elite have control over right now. They've been given the fatness of the earth. They have dominion over creation. Isn't that sickening? That's why the world is dying. Because the earth needs new management. The, the evil, violent man is ruling the earth. And that's why everything is dying. The earth needs new, proper, equitable management okay so look a, a floating rate exchange okay this is the other nation so you we, we talked about fixed rate when you pegged your money to the dollar in order to so you so you so you don't go crazy because the u.s dollar doesn't go crazy because everybody's holding it all right it's just like if you have a bucket all right if you have a bucket and it's filled with like you, let's say you have a tub and it's filled with sand and you add a cup of sand in there. Is that going to make that that tub go up and down very much? No. No. But if you have a small little bitty pail and it don't have much sand and you pour a big ass thing of sand in that tub in that in a, in that bucket, the sand is going to go up quick. Or if you pour out some sand, it's going to change things. It's going to be volatile because it's not big and it's not deep and it's not filled. That's the U.S. dollar compared to these other currencies. These are the currencies. That's why Bitcoin goes up so high and go up and down like crazy because it's like a little small tugboat in the ocean of currencies. Right? And so a little wave makes it move way more than it would a big ass fucking cruise ship. The U.S. dollar is like a cruise ship, and these other currencies are like little bitty kayaks. So waves in the market move it way harder. When a wave in the market don't move the U.S. dollar like that. So there are certain nations, they don't want to be moved. So they say, look, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm going to attach myself to this cruise ship. These other nations are, oh, the US, they're going to get out of the U.S. dollar and attach themselves to this little tugboat. You're an idiot. No, that's not, no. F to do that means you want your economy to fail. You want chaos. That, that's, the, the more, that's how we know this is an effort to do something. And it's not just United States versus China. The elite are controlling both sides. They're moving these economies to do this, to cause chaos. All right. Now, looking at China and some of these other larger nations, they have a floating exchange rate. A floating exchange rate is a, a, a regime or a nation where the currency price of a nation is set by the forex market. All right. Foreign exchange market based on supply and demand relative to the other currencies. This is in, in contrast to a fixed exchange rate in which the government in, uh, entirely or predominantly determines the rate. All right. So now we're, we're talking about, all right, your currency tied to our currency compared to a supply and demand. China wants their currency to be cheap. Why? Because if their currency is cheap, their goods are cheap. People buy more. They want to sell more because that's how they make their money in the market. Okay? So if the U.S. dollar and the Chinese yuan's ratio in the floating exchange rate and the supply and demand get thrown off too much, it will ruin the Chinese market because their goods and services will become too expensive in the market for people to buy a lot. So that would decrease their overall GDP and their power in the market. They have to be very intelligent by keeping a, a, a surplus. All right. And they have coordinated with the United States and the West to maintain that. And so they can maintain 
their uh, preeminence in the market. It was very coordinated. This is something Trump will talk about and complain about. But this is something that was a cons like an effort. As you see on the back end, China's at the forefront of creating a lot of the MOTB system mechanics and stuff because it's cheap and easy to produce it out there. And they don't they have a government, they can do what the hell they want, they can do it beyond international uh, rules and regulations. And then the West just adopts it a little bit later, underneath, you know, slowly. That's why we have the, the, these these uh, so-called technological or technology wars, quote unquote, with China. But it's not a war. It's just theater. It's just theater. China can't run. They don't have the capability to do a reserve currency. Nobody's holding Chinese yuan like that. And for people to just start holding Chinese yuan will completely, everybody in China will go into a riot because everything would be too expensive. Nobody can afford anything. People can barely afford anything in China as it is right now. And it's cheap. So imagine everybody overnight buying the Chinese yuan and now it's the uh, a global currency. <laughs> They would the, the the people would literally start a war. Okay. So when people are making these comments, they're not really looking at the scope of how things are, are working internationally. It's a it's a global effort, and they're working with the beast. But when everything goes down, then all these nations are going to begin to fight. Because all hell is going to break. They're going to basically try to transition into this new system. Fuck up the dollar. Uh, they Everybody's sucking down and start eating up this dollar. It's going to jack everything up. It's not going to just be America that, that's in tumult. The world is going to be in tumult. And that's where we're going to see World War Three, Armageddon. Them trying to come with the MOTB. And we're very close to this now. Now, what he's saying is true as far as how close it is. But is it going to happen this year? I don't know. But I know the prophecies speak of it, and we're seeing the signs of the times. Okay? We're seeing the signs of the time, and they're gradually progressing towards this. Okay? So, Lord willing, that that that, that, that brought some comment, uh, concepts, some ideas for you brothers to wrap your head around. I'll try to uh, keep my head on the swivel in the comment boards and answer uh, questions or whatever uh, the spirit, you know, spirit allows me to. But Lord willing, that made sense, man. And uh, I, I'm, I'm sure you brothers are going to be throwing in comments and uh, to add on this idea. And uh, right now, we're continuing to just watch. There's things happening in the news. You know, people going crazy, this and that. You know, you know, all the prophets are uh, pushing the word. We'll continue to push the word. So Lord willing, it's edifying. Once again, I say, call hello. Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah Bashim, Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutation to y'all. Okay, I'm out there pushing the words. It's the only truth, man. Shalom.